Hello, YouTube. I hope you're having a fantastic day. A question that I get asked on a regular basis is why I do the things that I do, how I run my class as far as certification. Now, some of that is because I have this YouTube channel. I produce content to try and help people on their certification journey. But some of that is because I've had a lot of success in my classroom, especially when it comes to Excel. This year, over 90% of my students have earned the Excel certification. My goal was to hit 90 and I hit above it. Last year, I was just over 85%. Now, some of you guys are thinking, yeah, you have a special set of students that you pre-selected at the beginning of the year. You only have like 30 kids. It's all in your favor. But that's not the case. At my school, we have about 400 freshmen and they're all evenly divided amongst three teachers. So we all have a group of kids, and that ranges from kids that really struggle with reading, that are intensive reading, to kids that don't have any problems with reading. They're in one or two AP classes, and they're pushing themselves all day long. And so I have the full gamut of students. I have no special students. I don't have any pre-selection process. What I'm given is what I have for the year, and I do what I can to help them. As we begin talking more about this class, the most important thing I think for Excel specifically is just sitting in it. I didn't start Excel until the end of October and I ended it at spring break like March 15th-ish. That's like five months. I think that the most important thing for students is that they sit in Excel and they, if I could say it, just marinate in it. And every day is a different touch. Those touches are important. They might just get one little thing here and a little thing here, but they're going to get comfortable in the program. And that's important when they take the certification exam. And then I don't rush into anything. A lot of people are like, hey, how can we speed things up? I want to do Word first quarter. I want to do Excel second quarter. And I want to do PowerPoint third quarter. And fourth quarter is going to be whatever I want to teach them, whether it's resumes or dressing up or applying for a job, whatever it is. But I don't think that that's what's best for our students as far as their certification journey, especially for Excel. It's important that they sit and work and work. And the first time they saw a Gmetrics practice exam for Excel was December. It was their midterm. And I did that on purpose. And I stretched and I reorganized things to help my students prepare for that exam. And then when they did it, they did well. It's important that your students sit and practice and practice. Don't take shortcuts. Let them sit in it. Yes. Are the kids going to complain? Sometimes, yeah, they're going to complain. But you have to think what's best for my students. And what's best is that they sit and practice and practice and practice. Something else that I think is important for Excel is my expectations. On G metrics, I want nothing less than a 95 on the training. There's no reason that students don't get at least that. The, the reasoning behind that is because I want them to earn a 90 on the test. And now some of you are like, wow, you have unrealistic expectations. But I'm telling you, I don't. I set my expectations. I made them very clear to my students. And I expect my students to rise to the occasion. And you know what? They do. I know that if students have to struggle in the training that they will learn and they will get it. It'll become theirs. And then when they take the test and they don't get the score the first time they take the test and then they have to go back and do the training again, I'm telling you, they're going to get that. And when they take the certification test, that knowledge is theirs. They've spent time in it. They've struggled, but they've earned the scores that they've earned and they deserve to go over there and test. It's important that we set those expectations high. They will rise to it. Just be clear in your expectations. And then finally, what's important is that I allow my students to retest. I know some teachers are like, no, they failed it. That's it. I'm done. They're getting a 40 or whatever it is on the test. And I understand what you're saying, but it's important that you give those kids an opportunity to retest. Have you ever struggled with something? Have you ever failed something and felt miserable about it? I think it's important for my students that they know that they can go back and retest. If my students get ahead and they have time, I'm like, go ahead, take the Excel test. Let's see how you do. Now, they're not just taking it flippantly. They've gone, they've prepared, they've practiced. 
and then they get those scores. And if they meet my criteria, I'll go in and fix their grade. At the end of the day, their grade to me is not so important. What's important is their mastery. And if they can master the content, they can earn the certification. And then also in my schedule, as I plan the year out, what I do is I allot for uh, a couple, a week or two where students can, it's just G metrics day, as I call them, where they're, they're looking at what they didn't get. It might be one score. It might be two scores. And I allow those two weeks for them to work on training and testing and getting those scores they didn't get the first time. And that allots for them to go in and take the test again. You can do what you want in your class, obviously, but I think that these are some of the reasons that my students have been able to be successful, and I hope that maybe something I've said will help you. I'd like to hear what you're doing in your classroom. What are you doing that's helping your students be successful? Mm-hmm.